How are you? How are you? How are you doing? Everybody, welcome to the Wolf Den Podcast, episode number 33. How are you doing, Will? 33. I'm I'm doing quite well. Uh Bob just had to just had to stop my daughter from sticking her hand in a lit candle, you know, the usual stuff. I've How done, are you? I've done that to grown adults. So <laughs> so she's smarter than some of my friends, got to say. That's yeah. that's that's good to know on my end. That's bad to know on your end. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I'm glad you're all here, everybody. I'm glad you're all doing yes. well, presumably. Um, but today we have a lot to talk about. We have to talk about again more Switch Pro rumors, and well, it's not every month. Once a month. Bloomberg just <laughs> drops on us like an info dump of what they know about the Switch Pro. I feel like they know yes. everything about it, and they're just doing this to drive to, to to milk as many clicks as they can for as long as possible. And I know that we here at the Wolf Den have been, I guess you could say, skeptical as to what the next switch will be whether it's just like an iterative version like the new nintendo switch or the switch you know 2.0 or whatever or if this is truly a next generation switch console i think at this point it's safe to say that the next switch does exist and we will be seeing it relatively soon and i think we now need to accept that and wrap our heads around it because this is the world we live in now. The your old Switch, your original Switch, might be as good as a doorstop, but no, we don't know. No, we'll find out. No, I I, I think no. that we've pretty much been been at as up to this point, we've been pretty spot on with how uh, how every all of the rumors have been going. Yeah, I think the weirdest thing about it is you and I, we both think it's the like. Like it's it's basically like the PlayStation Pro to the PlayStation Four. It's right. just like an iterative version of the Switch. But we have like two different like mindsets for it. Like you compare it more to the new Nintendo 3DS, right? Which is basically the 3DS version of the PS4 Pro. Whereas I'm more equating it to the PS4 Pro, something that. You know, it's the same system, but there is a noticeable bump up in hardware. That's not necessary, but it will make certain games look and play better. It it can be a mix between the two because Nintendo's yeah. not exactly going to be the the the, the leader in in uh in, in in hardware. They're not going to be the leader in specs. You know, so right. Yeah. No, I'm I think expecting about, this to be like PC quality. When I think about a PS4 Pro or an Xbox One X, I'm thinking of Tr- you know trying to be the leader in specs try trying to match modern standards and i don't think the switch pro or whatever it's going to be called is going to do that for nintendo um yeah but i think it will be a moderate s- s- spec bump for sure but that's why i think more like a new nintendo 3ds because uh i think it'll be a redesign that looks a lot sleeker and is a lot nicer and that's probably mm-hmm. why most people are going to want it but I think maybe there'll be a little bit of a spec bump that people will be excited about. Um, Do you think we'll also get... Well, I guess we'll talk about it when we get to the article. I think at best, we're getting a clean 1080p. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, uh, before we get into that, we have two things to talk about. One, thank you for the subscriptions. Will Wolf, damn it. For with 19 months, <laughs> hooray for me my, and my sub anniversary. Apparently, thanks, Will, for using they, your Prime I, sub. I had to, yeah, I had to renew my Prime sub, but like the past few weeks, it's been bugging me to announce that I have a sub anniversary. So, this was the week I finally decided to do it. So, there you go. Um, yay for me, yay. <laughs> uh, well, you have to renew it every month if you have a Prime, yeah, every month, no, and, I, and I do. It's just it doesn't I auto renew do it. everybody, you got to yeah. do it manually. Or else it's not going to know that you need to give the Wolf yeah. Den your Prime sub. Uh, also, thank you, Chubby Frog, for the 13 months. I want I want Kirby and Metroid out of the E3 Nintendo. Anything else is just a bonus. Uh, I think you got more of a chance of Kirby than, than Metroid. Yeah. 
Um, Although, if there is a new Switch coming out, that would be the perfect time to say, hey, we got a new Metroid. That's what everybody's and thinking. O- yeah. Uh, F-F-N-E-T-O-C-W-B. You just punched the keyboard, didn't you? Thank you for the four months. <laughs> Spoopy Girl, thanks for the hundo bits. Uh, Will, you're like out of sync again. I don't know what happened. We te- we tested uh, it before, and, and yeah. everything was fine, and now all of a sudden it's, it's a problem. Well, it's, that's just life. It's It's garbage. <laughs> Is it because I started streaming? It can't be. Impossible. Uh-oh. What if I did this? Hold on. What if I did that? Say something. Hello, I am saying things. I am saying a bunch of things. Nope. <laughs> well, anyway, uh, before we get into Switch Pro, we need to talk about the new stuff that you can get f- with for free with your subscriptions this month. Yes. At the beginning of every month, ladies and gentlemen, your your fine overlords over at PlayStation and Xbox give you free games. So as long as you're subscribed to their subscription services, PlayStation Plus or Xbox Live Gold, uh, and you usually forget that you have these free games. So that's why we're here to tell you about them. Uh, it's an interesting month, particularly over on the Microsoft side, which we will get to uh, when we get to that. But we always start off with the Sony side of things. Ooh. So... Starting today, uh, June 1st, we have Operation Tango, the PS5 version only. There's a PS4 version of it, but only the PS5 version is available for free with PlayStation Plus. Team up, to save, team up to save the world in this cooperative spy adventure, challenging you and a friend to jump to join up online to compete with to complete dangerous missions across the globe in a high-tech near-future world, combine skill sets from different points of view, uh, playing either hacker or agent to overcome asymmetrical challenges, working in tandem with your voice to link up. With only your voice to link up, teamwork is crucial and communication is key. Note, Operation Tango requires both players to have access to a working microphone. Ooh. So that sounds interesting. Uh... I, I gotta see this game. This game, the art looks amazing. I'm yeah, not I don't sure. think I checked it out before, like looking this up. But just reading it sounds cool. The artwork from the trailer looks pretty good. I've never seen this before. It looked familiar, but uh, now looking at the trailer, I've never seen this before. In my I think life. it's it's a new game. It mm. might be one of those PS, PS Plus debuts, as is our next game, which we will. Which we will get to. Get to it. Let's do it. All Power right. The next game is Virtual Fighter Five Ultimate Showdown. Sega's iconic one-on-one uh, battler gets remade for a new generation by Yakuza and Judgment developer Ryu Ga, Ryu Ga Gotaku Games. Uh, this console exclusive debuts on PlayStation Plus, allowing both Virtual Fighter veterans and newcomers to experience the intense martial arts combat, deep strategy, and intricately balanced gameplay of the groundbreaking 3D fighter in stunning HD. New online features like custom tournaments, supporting up to 16 players and live spectating, join classic modes like Rank Match, Arcade, and Virtual Fighter's most uh, famously robust training to deliver the definitive Virtual Fighter experience. Uh, this game will not only be available on PlayStation Plus for two months, June and July, uh, but it will also be released on PlayStation Now in June. So if you have PlayStation Now, uh, you get it anyway, but it's debuting right now on PlayStation Plus if you don't want to subscribe to Sony's crappy streaming service. But it says it's a PlayStation 4 game. It is a PlayStation 4 game. So how is it debuting now? Because it's it's like with Resogun, remember that? Yeah. When that game came out, or uh, Rocket League, it came uh, when it debuted. It debuted as a PS Plus game. Yeah. Sony worked out a deal with Sega so that instead of it going on sale traditionally, if you have PlayStation Plus, they'll include it in your subscription. Does that make sense? No, I get that, but it's a PlayStation Four game. Yeah. And it's debuting now on PlayStation. Yes. In the age of the PlayStation 5. Well, a lot of games still aren't on, like debuting on PlayStation 5. 
you know, we're going to get to a, another game coming out later this year. Uh, when we get to the Sonic stuff, that is not debuting on PlayStation 5. It's debuting on PlayStation 4. That sucks. <laughs> Well, it's not like you can't, it's not like you can't play it on PlayStation 5. Right. I was I would just expect the new games to be PlayStation 5 games. Like why why do I have this thing, Will? Why do I have this white brick? Uh, cuz you got to make giant content. giant slate. You got to make content. Well, I haven't gotten it? one yet cuz I don't have to make content for it. I could have just I could just play this on my PlayStation 4. I spent $500 so that I can play things no one else can. Yeah. <laughs> Well, whatever. And yeah, yeah. I, uh, I don't see any indication of what even console this is for. It's just free for PlayStation Plus members and PlayStation Now members. It doesn't even say on you, the website, on, on, on the Virtua Fighter 5 website, it doesn't even say what console it's for. Well, I mean, because at this point, it doesn't matter. If you if you have a PlayStation 4 or 5, you can play it. True. You know, I guess there's it's not optimized for PS5 the way some other games might be, but you can still play it on PS5. Next is Star Wars Squadrons. Star Wars Squadrons. Master the art of the starfighter combat in frenetic multiplayer space dogfights and learn what it means to be a pilot in the thrilling Star Wars single-player story set after the events of Return of the Jedi and seen from alternating perspectives of two factions. The New Republic fights for freedom. The Empire demands order. Take control of the iconic crafts such as the X-Wing and the TIE Fighter. Customize layouts and cosmetics. And divert power between weapons, shields, engines, and immer while immersing yourself in the cockpit. Uh, you'll also have the option to play the entire game in virtual reality on PSVR. So this is a PS4 game, but it has a PS5 specific upgrade. So this is more your speed, I guess, in terms of what version you're getting. Why did I buy this game? Uh, same. Uh, I did not like this game. <laughs> Really? Well, it's 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 a multiplayer focused game, right? It's a multiplayer focused game, but I think this like it has a a decent single player. I think it's just it's not the game I wanted. Mm -hmm. I wanted something fast paced, arcadey, like Rogue Squadron. This is more of a sim, like X Wing or Tie Fighter on the PC, and I don't think that style of gameplay translated well to this particular game okay that's just my take on it i haven't played it i bought it for xbox and i never i never put it in it's a, a lot harder than you think it's gonna be because it's like i said it's a sim so you move with the right analog stick mm -hmm. like you would an actual uh fighter jet interesting and it's all from it's all from cockpit view cock cockpit view one there's time? no third person cockpit view. Okay, just making there's sure. There's no there's no third person camera. Which makes look like trying to like get your bearings and like look around your surroundings like very difficult. I can't tell you how many times I played that game upside down. <laughs> um all right, so I mean that's actually this is actually a pretty good showing from 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 PlayStation for this month. Yes. Uh, yeah, no, it, overall, it's a very good showing. I mean, Virtual Fighter 5 alone is a big deal, like, especially like fighting games, because Virtual Fighter 5 came out on the PS3 and the Xbox 360 back in 2006, and that was like the definitive end to the series. Mm -hmm. And now it looks like Sega's trying to, like, you know, not just rejuvenate that game, but like the series as a whole. And this is the first step uh, towards that. But that's hold, cool. Hold on one second, Will. All right, hello. Uh, I don't think that helped. You have, you have no video. Um. Anyway, we got Xbox. Yes. Not as strong of a showing, but some interesting developments here. So, on the Xbox One, uh, or the Series X and S, whatever, for the entire month of June, you get... The King's Bird. In this award-winning artistic title, enjoy a seamless platform adventure with physics-based movement, escape into a world kept secret by a tyrant, and discover the truth about your freedom. This looks good. Yeah. It's it's reminded me of like Lightfall. A... I think the problem is this is definitely a game you'd want to play on your Switch. Yes, I don't. I definitely don't want to play it on, on, yeah. uh, on this. 
Uh, next, from June 16th to July 15th is Shadows Awakening. Take control of a demon summoned by the Shadow Realm to consume the souls of long-dead heroes. With a gripping storyline and challenging gameplay, find out who is in charge, the demon or the souls, that it has devoured. <laughs> uh, this, one, this one doesn't look good. <laughs> nah, no, nah, it doesn't. Uh, oh wait, like the, a... the company that made uh the company that made uh the uh, the King's Bird, they made yeah. Alto, or the collection, the Alto collection. Oh, okay. Remember that game, that snowboarding. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, mobile game. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. All right. So next on the Xbox 360, which you can of course play through backwards compatibility. Uh, from June 1st to the 15th is Neo Geo Battle Coliseum. All the best fighters await you with a host of original heroes and unique characters that transcend time. Unleash this tag team versus fighter with all your favorite Neo Geo warriors amassed under one roof. This definitely seems like their answer to Virtual Fighter 5. Um, this is not beat out Virtual Fighter 5. <laughs> no. <laughs> Looks like, cool, I know though. the Neo yeah, no, and I know the Neo Geo games are good. Like, their fighting games are very good. But, I mean, Virtual Fighter Five is, like, a marquee name, you know? Right. Well, I mean, yeah. this next one is more, I this think. This next one, is, yeah. Well, okay. So, from June 16th to the 30th, you get the original Injustice Gods Among Us. From the creators of Mortal Kombat, iconic characters from DC Comics such as Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, and more clash together in epic battles with a massive scale and bold original storylines. See what happens when our greatest heroes become our greatest threats. Now, this game is good. It tells a very good story, uh, a shockingly good story for what it's uh, trying to do. Uh, it's very fun. I don't think it's necessarily outdated because Injustice 2 came out. Uh, having said that, this game was already free. Oh. I have this game and I didn't pay for it. What happened was last year, during uh, in June of last year, during like the height of the pandemic when the game companies were like wanted you to stay indoors and play video games, mm -hmm. this was released for free on the Xbox one and xbox 360 not a no, games with gold situation not a games with gold no gold required interesting and what what else i will say and not many people know this but xbox 360 games with gold games are not restricted by the same rules as xbox one games with gold games so if your subscription lapses you can still play your xbox 360 games with gold they're not tied to your gold subscription. They're tied to your account proper. What does that mean? So, you know how, like, if your gold subscription lapses, you can't oh, play your so Xbox you, One? Yeah, if it yeah. cancels or if it's not, you stop paying for it. Yeah. Yeah. So, basically, Microsoft is giving you another chance to get this game for free if you haven't already. Mm -hmm. Which is nice of them, I will say. But not only that, I didn't put this in the keep, but I'll say it right now. There's a bonus fifth game available on Xbox One. Oh. Uh, the game Tell Me Why by Don't Nod, the creators of um, Life is Strange and those games. They are releasing their game uh, Tell Me Why on Xbox consoles, Windows 10, and Steam free for the entire month of June in celebration of Pride Month. Oh, isn't this new? Uh, relatively, yeah. Yeah, uh, last August. So it's like a yeah. year old. I remember seeing this in one of the announcements. And I yeah. think it's I think it's like really short, too. Yeah, it's only like three episodes. Oh, okay. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So, it's, so um, in addition to in addition to the four games you traditionally get, uh, through games with gold, you're getting a surprise fifth game, not from Microsoft, but through their stores at no extra cost. Uh, cheap and you don't even need a gold you subscription. You don't even need a gold subscription to get uh, Tell Me Why. Oh. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. 
Uh, I'd imagine they're also promoting a new game coming out too. Probably. Well, also too, the game is about LGBTQ characters, right. and it is Pride Month, so. Right, right. Show your pride or your support for the pride. Yeah, download the game, play the game. I'm, yeah. I'm sure it's. Let's look up to how long to beat. Uh, everybody's a big fan of what's that other game that they have? Life is strange. <laughs> Life is strange. Yeah. Uh, we'll uh, leave the call and come back. Okay, goodbye. Nine and a half hours for Tell Me Why. So that's not too bad. Um, Three hours for each episode. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. It's Pride Month. Anyone caught not being gay will be reported to the FBI. There you go, Lubick. Hey, Will's back. Hey. With video this good? time. Okay. You are good. You are good. All right. All right. Uh, we got. We also are doing Game Pass games now because this is important. Yes, because it's a different that, subscription service, and there's a lot. Of, they keep adding games every month. Yes, and this is clearly where Microsoft's focus is. <laughs> um, so in for June in Game Pass, you're getting The Wild at Heart, For Honor, uh, Darkest Dungeon, and Backbone. Uh, I know For Honor. Yes. I've I know Darkest, of Dungeon. Darkest Dungeon. Yeah. That's it. I don't know any of these yeah. other games. <laughs> Should also clarify that the Wild at Heart is for is being added to cloud streaming on Game Pass. For Honor is being added to cloud streaming and Xbox console. Darkest Dungeon is being added to cloud streaming, Xbox, and PC. And Backbone is just PC. Okay, this is uh, not the best uh, adding of Game Pass. <laughs> no, <laughs> um, but I'd say I'd say the games with gold and the PlayStation Plus showings were pretty good. Yeah, they weren't bad. I think the slight edge goes to Sony because they had more marquee titles, but overall, you, you mm -hmm. got some you got some good ones here. Uh. So make sure if you got any of these subscription services for any of these consoles, you're getting your free games because you're missing out on yes. the stuff you pay for. Otherwise. Uh, yeah. Foul, thank you for the 33 months. Oh, first sub anniversary while Will is here. Congratulations. Uh, thank you. So uh, Fried Biscuit with the three hundo. I won $10 on a scratch off. Here's some bits. Thank you very much. Thank and you. Congratulations. Um... I said I think I said last week that Wood was gonna be on the podcast this week. Uh we kind of slacked off on that. <laughs> I waited till the last minute to be like, hey, when are you good today <laughs> to do it? <laughs> obviously he's doing his own podcast right now. Which apparently he's moving to yeah. to YouTube. I don't really? know what I don't know what the reasoning behind that is. Um anyway, let's get to the meat of the show here. Uh, yeah. So there's new news about a new Switch Pro. Uh, we we we, we it's, it's been getting pretty much reconfirmed every single month. Bloomberg makes an yeah. makes an article. Let's see. Oh, your monthly limit for free content is about to oh, <laughs> about to expire. Okay. Well, I only go here once a month, so it shouldn't matter. Yeah. Is from Takahashi Takashi Mochizuki, who uh, does this every friggin' month. Uh, I feel yeah. like he's just friggin' he's like undercover at Nintendo. You might, yeah. Goes by a different name there. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, I'm just gonna read the article. Nintendo yeah. company plans to begin assembly of its new Switch as soon as July and release the upgraded replacement for its four-year-old game console in September or October, people familiar with the matter said. The new console, likely to be priced higher than the $299 original, may be announced ahead of E3 conference starting June 12th to allow publishers to showcase their full range of Switch games at the global event. The people said asking not to be named because the plans are not yet public. It will be sold alongside the $199 Switch Lite with the standard Switch phased out over time. 
I will pause and interject and say that I will be shocked if this thing is more than two ninety nine. I yeah. I I don't know the way they, Nintendo. They, go ahead. They they always pride themselves when they release a new system that it is at a an affordable price point the gamecube was the the cheapest system of this of that era the wii was the cheapest system of that era the wii u kind of was depending on what version you got and the switch uh came in cheaper than the xbox one and the ps4 uh when they where they were at at the time well that's the thing is that right now uh the xbox well okay so the playstation 5 is 500 dollars there's a discless yeah. one that's four hundred dollars. Xbox mm-hmm. right now, there's a five hundred dollar one and there's a three hundred dollar like one. Same. Yeah. So yeah. we're in a weird situation here. So you can get a brand new current gen Xbox for the same price as a Switch. Which is yeah. ca- kind of crazy. You normally Nintendo undercuts it. Um yeah. but So here's the thing. Nintendo could have sold the Switch for more money and still sold a butt ton and made just as much money. Um, Mm -hmm. I don't see the reason for raising the price now. Like, they know the demand is really high and they know people are going to really want this new iteration, but why would the price go up now? Especially if they're phasing out the current Switch. They, I would I see it yeah. being the same price to replace it in stores. You know? Unless there's a significant um, spec bump in yeah, this the, new switch. Unless yeah, the spec like bump has to be significantly pretty big. different. But yeah, or it, the dock's got to be like crazy or something. You know, like give us something. Yeah. Um. Though, but the the vision that i have in my head of this switch pro or this new iteration of the switch is that it's just going to be a design iteration and it's going to be sleeker and nicer looking and and maybe a moderate spec bump so uh yeah this it's just going to replace the current switch and they're even saying it's going to replace the current switch so i don't see why it would be yeah more money that means it's going to cost more to for new switch users which sucks I mean, yeah. they could get the light, but nobody wants the light. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, assemblers will start shipping the new model whose commercial name is known only to a handful of people within the Kyoto-based company as early as July, and production is planned to ramp up to a peak in the October-December quarter. Oh, This is despite widespread semiconductor shortages that have affected the supply of everything from automobiles to TVs, headphones, and game consoles, including the Switch itself. A Nintendo spokesman declined to comment. It's a surprise. Uh, Nintendo has to compete for gamers' attention with a new console generation introduced by rivals Sony Group Corp. and Microsoft Corp. in November. Uh, their PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X machines beef up the visual fidelity, speed, and performance of their predecessors, and both have been in extremely limited supply since launch. The Switch Maker's response will be to upgrade its flagship console with a 7-inch Samsung display uh, company OLED display and faster NVIDIA Core graphics silicon making it capable of 4k output when docked to a tv bloomberg news previously reported now we again we were we talked about oh i reached my limit nah. I die. well we talked about this uh i don't like the wording here i don't think it's going to be capable of 4k output and if it is it's going to be uh through uh ddsl through through their digital upscaling yeah it's gonna it's gonna be it's not gonna be pure 4k it's gonna be some sort of upscaling to to the 4k spec but the games are not gonna be rendered in 4k dlss it's gonna be like sticking a it's gonna be like sticking a dvd a standard definition dvd into a high definition blu-ray player it'll play it 
a 1080p, but it's not going to be true 1080p. Yeah. And you know, it's going to do a very good job. I'm just letting you know, it's yeah. not, it's not going to be, people are going to be disappointed if, if you keep saying it's a yeah. 4k output device, <laughs> people are going to be a little disappointed when they get this thing. Um, so again, that's, uh, I, I got a lot of problems with this article, even though they're the ones who supposedly have insider information. You know, I'm getting, I'm just getting sick of Bloomberg. I'm getting sick of it. <laughs> uh, seven inch OLED. Nice. And you know what? Um, wait, no, this thing's seven inches. It's got to be bigger than that. But it's not, oh, it's not OLED. It's, it's not n- OLED though. It's not OLED, but it's got to go. It's got to go to the bezels. What are we doing here? If we're redesigning this thing, why yeah. are we going to have the same size screen? You know? Yeah. Make it go to the bezels or something, or 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 maybe make the whole rest of it smaller. I don't see how they could do that though because of the Joy Cons. Yeah, um, unless they redesign the Joy Con, which I think is that, possible. If this that, is like a true next gen Switch, that or even be- if it is like a even if it is like a Switch Pro or whatever, I think redesigning Joy Cons is possible. Redesigning Joy Cons would be wacky. Yeah. They are making those Zelda Joy-Cons, so that would be pretty wacky if they just decided we're making new Joy-Cons. Yeah. Um, although they do have the drift problem, so maybe they do want to change that. I don't see it happen. I don't see a redesigned Joy-Con happening, though. I mean, maybe they would because of the drift problem. The drift problem was widespread. Right. And they are being sued for it. <laughs> yeah. Um, But a lot of these people, like like Bloomberg, they get their information from parts manufacturers. So they might know that Samsung is selling Nintendo a butt ton of seven inch OLED displays. So they might know that might be a hard fact that they have. Um, Mm -hmm. So that's possible. But I mean, I'd again, be surprised if this isn't a, device with smaller bezels if it has the same size screen something else has to go on to get rid of those bezels or or yeah. we're just gonna have or the thing's just gonna look the same and that's gonna be weird um uh pokeshock says they've said the joy cons would be interchangeable who's they Yeah, what do you mean by interchange? The Joy Cons are interchangeable. And Aru says the the Switch has a six point two inch screen. I think, like in total, it's. I mean, maybe viewing space is six point two inches. It actually. But I think they count. They count the bezels in the in the screen in the size. Screen, according to Nintendo's website. Multi-touch captive touchscreen, 6.2-inch LCD screen. I always thought it was 7 yeah. inches. So it is where everything I said for the last five minutes is completely invalid. I, 7 inches would, <laughs> would fix everything. It would make it go all the way to the bezels, and we wouldn't have to redo the Joy-Cons at all. Yeah. Everything would be fine. Um, I take everything back. Um, Just the Vagabond says size is not important. Uh, that's an opinion. They, yeah they, they, people, they just tell you yeah. that because they don't want to hurt your feelings exactly uh so uh, i'll reiterate again because i just spent like five minutes saying the wrong thing uh seven inches would fix a lot it would make the screen go all the way to the bezel uh you yeah. wouldn't have all this space over here it'd be a bigger screen and you wouldn't even have to redesign the joy cons that way so that's great um Anyway, I'll keep reading the article. What Bloomberg Intelligence says, an upgraded Switch can be extremely valuable in extending the life cycle of the platform. Both Sony and Microsoft have had success with mid-cycle upgrades as a means to drive growth from live services. And as this becomes a greater drive for Nintendo, not fragmenting the user base across different platforms would be advantageous. Pause. Did they have success with mid-console upgrades? Sony Microsoft? So, so... <laughs> because... I don't, I don't think nobody, Sony did. No, aside from you, nobody I know upgraded their Xbox or their PS4. N- nobody was reporting on the sales of either system. Microsoft didn't report sales in general. Sony didn't say, 
boo. And they loved touting how much enemy PS4s they sold. So did, were they successful? Did people run out and buy those? So, so I, it's, hmm. so when the PlayStation 4 Pro and the Xbox Series, uh, or the Xbox One X, when those were announced and those came out, uh, the uh, gaming community was in an uproar. Everybody was pissed that there was a mid-cycle iteration that big. Yeah. Everybody was like, this is the way gaming's going to be now. And everybody was pretty much unanimously pissed off that we're not getting a new console. We're getting an iteration. Um, I believe, I remember hearing somewhere that Sony... That that the PlayStation Four didn't sell that the PlayStation Four Pro didn't sell that well, but I think that both Sony and Microsoft didn't make that many. They were anticipating it not to sell that well. Well, so, I know Phil Phil Spencer has said like he expects to sell more Xbox Ones than Xbox X, like One Xs. Like I knew he he was anticipating that. Yeah, but still, so, so, you have yeah. So I think in there in that regard it was a success because it met the sales that they were expecting. But I think, uh, in all, I, I wouldn't call it a success. Like it was, it was a weird experiment to me, you know? Yeah. Oh, definitely. Um, but that being said, this new console generation, they went right for the big time. They, I think they made less Xbox series S. And they just went you straight right, for the yeah. One X uh, Series X. It's so yeah. co confusing to say all these names. I know. Um, but I, I love the Series S. This freaking this frick thing is awesome. Yeah, it's a nice I, system. I, I think if you want to save two hundred bucks, freaking, and you don't have a four K monitor or TV, freaking get the yeah. Series S. It's freaking awesome. Um, but anyway, uh, what else did I want to say? Um. Oh, so yeah, it, it, Bloomberg's talking about how Microsoft and Sony have done mid-cycle iterations before. What about Nintendo doing it all the time? They've done it every console, pretty much. Well, they haven't done it for the Wii U. They did it for the Wii, well, but it was they, really late in the in the generation. Well, no, because those aren't necessarily... Those are different, because the PS4 Pro and the Xbox One X, those were actual hardware like because they got new chips new graphics cards things like that Ninte what nintendo would do right yeah then what nintendo would do was basically redesign the outer packaging to make it smaller like right they they would like put and the nice chips in on a sleeker. smaller board the second yeah. version uh, of every nintendo console was always the better one apparently that's not true <laughs> Apparently that's not true. Apparently the uh, the Model Two NES, even though it's a top loader and that is better than the uh, traditional NES, uh, the VCR style, uh, does not support uh, composite video. It only supports RF, and it makes games look substantially worse. And there's a weird grid effect on there. And apparently there's a lot of like video problems with the Super Nintendo Mini compared but to the regular Super Nintendo. Oh, oh, boohoo! Look, look at the freaking Game Boy Pocket. Look at the freaking uh, uh, <laughs> new Nintendo DS. Look at the DS Lite. Well, again, the D, the, the, the Nintendo didn't the have DS, one. the DS, the DS, the DS to the DS Lite is the same system, just in a smaller package. The only real yeah, it looks nice. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. The first the DS DS was Ugo. They changed the aesthetic. The only comparable, you know, base model to pro model was the the 3DS and the new 3DS. That's why I'm saying this this is weird. This is a weird thing. If they're going for a spec bump, like we're in a new era. A history has told us that Nintendo's just gonna <laughs> redesign the thing and make it sleeker. But yeah. we're in a weird era where companies are doing these mid-cycle iterations that have like more power to it i don't know how much nintendo is gonna feed into that nintendo usually does their own thing so 
that's why I keep beating this drum that it's going to be a very moderate spec bump. Well, I mean, in the grand scheme of things, the PS Pro and the One X were moderate spec bumps. They weren't the full next generation leap as the PS5 and the Series I mean, X are. They were a lot less moderate than what I'm thinking is going to happen to the Switch. Right. They were a little, you know, you went from 1080 to freaking 4K. Or at least it, that's what it was marketed as. I mean, most games didn't even yeah. do freaking 4K. But that I, I don't, I think that with this console, I don't think they're going to charge more money and be like, look, can't buy this one anymore. Give us more money and we'll make it 4K. And it'll yeah. be shitty 4K, but it'll be 4K. <laughs> Give us another hundred. I don't think, I don't think that's going to, I don't think that's going to fly. Or if they do it, people are going to be pissed. I think they'll release this new Switch for $299. They'll cut the original Switch down to like by 100 bucks, And they'll cut the Switch Lite by like 50 bucks. I wouldn't be surprised if they start, you know, making less original Switches. Because everybody has one at this point. But I don't think they're getting rid of that anytime soon because they always keep their previous version around for a little bit longer they never say they're going to phase out a console right so they always just do it but that th that 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 might be a problem like releasing a new switch for the same price you can't keep selling the old one yeah and their intention here is to phase out the other one but if their intention isn't to phase out the other one then yeah of course they're going to charge more money for the new one um, but then they would have to bill it as being a spec bump to compensate for that extra money. And I don't think Nintendo is one to play ball in that way with the, with the yeah. greater games industry. I think they're carving their own path. They've done a fine job as it is. I don't think people are going to be like, what should I get? Should I get an Xbox Series X or should I get a Nintendo Switch? I don't think that's a question in anybody's mind. Yeah. I, I think I think if Nintendo really wants to deter people from getting an Xbox Series X or a PlayStation 5, they're going to do that with games. They're going to announce freaking Metroid or, or, or Z Z Zoldor or whatever. <laughs> anyway. Uh, uh, trying to... I had it. Hold on. Keep going. I'm going to read. Pricier components and rising labor costs in China are likely to push Nintendo Switch's price up to from the 299 that the console has been at since its launch in March 2017. Though the final retail price is not yet known, suppliers expect their per unit revenue from business with Nintendo to increase. Interesting. Nintendo shares rose for six straight days ahead of Thursday, bringing it closer to all-time highs on apparent expectations of an imminent announcement of the new hardware. Uh, that doesn't mean anything. Uh, investors just do their own thing. Uh, suppliers are confident that they uh, suppliers are confident they can fulfill Nintendo's orders despite the ongoing chip shortages. Its production lines are better prepared for the potential component shakeup and the parts Nintendo is using are subject to less competition than those in its rivals' more powerful consoles. Still, the company's ability to meet consumer demand won't be guaranteed as a dearth of display drivers, uh, a dearth of display driver ICs and Bluetooth chips have led to production of the incumbent switch stopping and starting several times, the people said. My brain can't comprehend that sentence. The company's it ability sounds like... to meet consumer demand won't be guaranteed as a dearth of display driver ICs and Bluetooth chips have led to production of the incumbent switch stopping and starting several times. Okay. Okay. So do you know what a dearth is? <laughs> it looks like... Uh, display drivers and Bluetooth chips, they, they, they have a been lack of them. Of them. Yes. There's a lack of them and it's uh -huh. been causing issues. Incumbent means the next uh, one. I know. I got it. I got also, it. Also, display driver, I, I see stands for integrated circuits. I looked it up. Okay. You know what this sentence sounds like? 
it sounds like a journalist trying to trying to justify their 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 degree that's what it sounds like to me well, it, it, it makes sense you know we're in a semiconductor just shortage. Say, there's been a lot of times where they didn't have enough display drivers and bluetooth chips so they had to stop production that's what they said yeah but they said it all frilly they said dearth and incumbent I don't like it. Uh, Nintendo president Sh- Shuntaro Furukawa said at its earnings press conference earlier this month that demand for the Switch remains high and the company wasn't able to produce as many units as it wanted. Uh, that is another reason why I think it would be weird if uh, that they're making a new console at all because they're already selling a bunch and they can't even keep up with demand. So, yeah. But that would be a reason for them to charge more for it. So on that note, I looked up because, again, the only thing we have to compare this to in Nintendo's history is the 3DS to the new 3DS. Mm -hmm. At launch, the new 3DS, no, sorry, the original 3DS at launch was $250, but then they lowered it to $170 because it didn't sell well and they were trying to sell units. I bought it for $250 like an idiot. Yes. But you got all those free games with it mm-hmm. because of that. Yes. The new Nintendo 3DS, specifically the XL model, which was bigger in size, uh, when that launched, it retailed for $200. <gasps> more money. So this, it, more money, but still less than the original oh my 3, God. Uh, 3DS launched for. It was what like right in the middle. What if they call it the Switch XL? <laughs> The point I'm trying to make here is when they launched the the updated version of the 3DS, they didn't do it at a significant price increase. They did it for roughly what the original version launched for, like right in the middle of its two like major price points, basically. But the, the difference is the Switch has never lowered in price. Not once. So... That leads me to believe that it is possible for the new Nintendo Switch or the Switch Pro, whatever they wind up calling it, being more expensive. They're going to call it the Switch XL. They're going to charge more money. It's going to be two fifty, and that's the bottom line. That's that's my uh, put a uh, hundred dollars on it. Put it on. Put it all. Put it all on red. That's You're what we're here first. That's what. That's what. It's, that's what they're doing. And that's the bottom line. That makes perfect sense. I mean, that's all we really have to go on is, is I keep relating it to the new Nintendo Switch. Yeah. But but in, J- uh, in Japan, they also released the new Nintendo Switch. I think it was LL. That's... Was that the XL? That, that's the XL. Large, large. No, but they yeah. also released a small version. And then we yes. got it later. We got it later. And when did they uh, didn't they release it alongside the XL? Yes. So how much was that? Was that the same price as the as the other one? Uh, I gotta open up all my tabs again. Because that's a possibility too. I mean, yeah. I don't think that they would uh, have two versions in Japan and only release one of them in America. That would be weird. Hold on. So, in Japan, the original Nintendo 3DS sold for, why aren't you giving me, oh, here we go. Nope. Oh, yeah. Introductory price. The 3DS, 25,000 yen. Okay. Was the introductory price. The new 3DS, introductory price. For the new 3DS, 16,000 yen. So less. So, so, the, so the, the small new one. Yes. And did it release at the same time as the LL? Uh, the Edu Edu? Yes. Okay. Yes, it did. And the LL launched... The new 3DS LL launched at 
18,800 yen. So still less than what the original 3DS launched for. But did the 3DS have a price drop in it, the same way it did in America? Uh, I believe it did. Yes, from that's the 25... price we need to compare the 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 normal new one to. It it lowered to 15,000 yen. So they charged an extra 1,000 yen for the new Nintendo Switch? Yes. I mean, I'm sorry, the new 3DS? Yeah. Interesting. I think that there's potential now, all of a sudden, I'm changing my mind here. I think there's potential they might raise the price a little bit. But it's it doesn't look like it's a significant price increase. No. Is what I'm getting at. No. So if anything, so we're looking at one of two things here. Either the, the current Switch... The one that everybody in this chat has right now, that gets lowered and the new switch comes in at 300 or the new switch comes in at like 350 max. Yeah. Did I say 250 before? Because I meant 350. Um, yeah. If I had to put money on the table right now, I don't want to. But if I had to, I would say Nintendo Switch XL maybe I'd put money in the little corner on the little thing where it says like match dealer. I'd put a little money over there. I'd yeah. say new Nintendo switch XL and uh, it'll be to uh, $350. That's if I had to put money on the table. Um, otherwise, I, mean, would they call I think it would be new Nintendo switch and it'll be this. It'll just replace the current one and it won't be any more money. I don't think they're going to call it the XL because XL implies that it's going to be like significantly bigger. And I think a seven inch screen is not enough to warrant it being called an XL. I think they'll call it either the new Nintendo Switch or the Super Nintendo Switch. I will give you $100 if they call it the Super Nintendo Switch. That would be a <laughs> great name, but yeah. they are not calling it that. They most likely will not. Even though it makes sense for what this sounds like it is. Yes, it would be the perfect name. If if it was actually like a spec bump. But I don't I don't think they're gonna do that. Nintendo Switch Plus Plus, maybe. Maybe. Well, today I learned in my Japanese class, I learned that if you go to McDonald's and you order uh if you want to order, you know, a size, they'll go uh uh nani o saizu mm -hmm. and you say uh um esu emu edu for s m or l <laughs> i thought that was interesting that's why that the switch the switch large is I mean, I'm sorry, the 3DS large is 3DS Edu, because it's the L. Right. Gotcha. I saw a tweet that said, I went to Starbucks and I asked for a big instead of a grande, so they took me out back and beat me up. <laughs> a big. Can I have a big? I always say large I when I go to... Oh, no, I say medium. I... Know, I when I go to Starbucks, I say medium, and I have a firm stance on that. If they say grande, yeah. I'll go medium. No, Whatever I say, it I say is, yeah. yes. I say yes when they say grande. I go, yeah, sure. But I, I refuse never, to say it never, myself. They never correct me. They never correct me when I say, like, I'll have a small or medium or a large. Yeah, they usually don't. But some yeah. on the rare occurrence, they'll go grande, and I'll go, sure. sure. <laughs> I have my wife say the, their stupid nomenclature for sizes. <laughs> Yeah, I used to have whoever I was with order the Starbucks for me because I was too embarrassed yeah. to say uh, medium caramel macchiato, half as sweet and extra hot. <laughs> I don't get that much. anymore. I don't get that anymore. I order from the app and I get an oat milk latte. And you know what? It's usually not great. I have I, I need a, I, I, my Starbucks order is, has been terrible lately. I'm having a. I'm too bougie now. I'm, I'm too I into know. coffee to, to to get a good Starbucks drink. I I don't know how you do it. I got man. some cinnamon thing last time. It was pretty good. Yeah. It was just like a regular latte with like some 
like light cinnamon flavoring. It was pretty good. I don't know, like I just like light cinnamon flavoring. I can do like I like your your French vanilla coffees, your hazelnut coffees, uh, your caramel vanilla coffees. Target has a really good caramel vanilla coffee, but I don't know when you start like adding shit to it, like all these extra steps. I can't. I can't. I can't. Keep you gotta. Up. You gotta come over for a little. For a little. Uh, uh, oh, you don't like maple syrup, right? No, I do like maple syrup. It's okay. I don't like like cause it's like people like dump the whole bottle on their pancakes right. and shit, and like that. It's a consistency thing with me. I like the taste of it. And I'll have like a little bit of it. Do but you I don't like maple like... flavored things? Yes, is what I'm getting at. You gotta have a little maple brown sugar latte. You gotta come over and have a little maple brown sugar. That latte. sound that sounds good. It is very good. Um. Anyway, uh, what's Eric Starbucks order? Vanilla sweet cream cold brew with uh vanilla sweet cream cold foam. Thank me later, Eric. I can't have. I used to get the nitro cold brew with sweet cream, but I can't have the sweet cream. So I need. If you want actually, if you want good cold brew, shockingly, uh, Panera makes a very oh. good i forgot what it's called it's like african vanilla almond whatever and it's it, you, they use almond say milk that. <laughs> see if i can find the actual they, they they use almond milk yeah there's some drinks at starbucks that come baked in with almond milk and uh, i appreciate that yeah um, so it's confusing because there's like two versions on the menu, but it, they're really the same thing. One just has almond milk and one doesn't. Interesting. Yeah. Um. Anyway, Dark Light with the thousand bits. That's a lot of bits. Ooh. Hey, Wolf Bros, I recently changed my name to Dark Light. Were you dark type? Uh, just so y'all know, what would you like to see change the most in a Switch Pro? Also, seven inches is a good size. Lots of smiley faces. That <laughs> uh, tells me a lot about you, then, buddy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what would I like to see in a Switch Pro? Uh, fix the drift, which I don't think yeah. they're going to do. Um, put another Bluetooth antenna in this bitch for audio only. Yes. For the love At, of no, Christ. No, yet. Some sort of Bluetooth audio, because it's, it's ridiculous. Not hard. Yeah, I mean this is a problem with all the consoles. Because yes. I like PS4, you have to use a dongle, and I'm not. I think Xbox on Xbox you can use regular Bluetooth, but I never tried it. Because like you, I just stick I just stick so, cable into my controller because it's easier that way. I remember hearing that. I think we talked about it on the show. I remember hearing that you could use regular Bluetooth on an Xbox Series X. Yeah. And apparently that is not true. It does not have Bluetooth okay. at all. It, okay. So it, it, the controller has Bluetooth, but that's not how it connects. Yes. It, it no, uses, that, it's a proprietary thing. Proprietary, yeah. So, so that, that Xbox wireless, whatever it's called, that I think has, it's just called Xbox that. wireless communication. Well, that's what yeah. the controller uses, and also the Xbox headset also uses the same connection that the controller oh. uses. And that's why it doesn't need a dongle, but the PlayStation headset does, because the PlayStation Got headset it. is using right. Bluetooth, even though the controller uses Bluetooth. Okay. It's all... It's, I have, it's all I can actually, have actually, wait, Bluetooth. I might be lying. I might be lying about the Sony headset. I gotta look it up. I can have... All I know is I can have a Bluetooth headphones, my Bluetooth mouse, and Bluetooth keyboard all hooked up to this laptop, and it works fine. And this laptop is from 2015. Yeah. And yet, my next generation consoles can't walk and chew gum at the same time. All right, help me out here. Where's the bus? We got a bus here. We got a bus here. We got a bus here. We, uh, this is a, there could be buses here. And I don't know. I wouldn't know. That's definitely the back of a bus. This is definitely a bus. I think we're good. I think we're good. Okay. I was like, what are you talking about? And then I look over <laughs> and I see you're trying to do CAPTCHA. I'm still trying to... It's the Panera Madagascar Vanilla Cold Brew. Ah. And there's two kinds. There's the cream and then there's the almond version one just has cream one has almond milk what the hell did i just it, do <laughs> i'm on your set 
What? I'm on your set. Oh, look at that. Oh, I'm not sharing my screen with you. Sorry. I'm on, I'm on your set. Right, so now I see it now. I, went uh, to, I don't know. I don't know what. I, oh, God. Everything's terrible. I, I'm, I've ruined OBS. I rearranged that bookshelf, by the way. And I don't think you have my new display case there. Every, this, everything just went to shit right now. What are um, you trying to do? I'm just trying to look for where, what type of wireless the, the Sony 3 Pulse headset uses. Because I don't know oh. if it's Bluetooth or 2.4 gigahertz, to be honest. I mean, it's got to be 2.4 gigahertz if it's using a dongle. It doesn't gotta. That that dongle could be for Bluetooth. No. Why would... No, because there's already Bluetooth in the system. But I don't think you can use it. You can't use it for audio. Or else there would be other headsets, you know? Just, oh my. You can get a Bluetooth... Uh, there's, I see right now they're selling Bluetooth dongles for... I think it says PS4. Um... Yeah, you can get a Bluetooth PS4. dongle for PS4 and it'll work for... Yeah. All, but PS4 has, it has Bluetooth for the controller. It's very stupid. Everything's very stupid. Um, so I don't know. I can't, I can't find an answer, but uh, it, it might... The 3D Pulse might be 2.4 gigahertz. Either way, put an extra Bluetooth radio in there specifically for audio. Yeah. Um, they sell Bluetooth dongles for PCs that say audio only. Right. So I think that there's like a special thing for audio specifically. Um, anyway, what we talk about? Well, oh yeah, just... switch things we want for a Switch Pro. Yeah. Uh, um, I would like to see Bluetooth in there. Um, what else do I want? A better dock, a, 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 a smaller form factor dock. Uh, I do want yeah. a bigger screen that fills up the whole thing. Um, and that's really it. Really all I want. And and a steady 1080p in every game. That's all I want. Yeah. I think that's all I can ask for. Um anyway. Uh more Nintendo news though. Come oh, out. Oh yeah, but hot. not the good kind. Not well. Uh I mean no, it's not good. But uh no. it's it's I don't think it's that terrible. I think it's kind of expected. Uh, yeah, here we go. Nintendo well, win. This is from torrentfreak.com. Why did why this website will? <laughs> uh, I mean, Look, Torrent Freaks is uh, talk about our an unbiased source, source. <laughs> when it comes to uh, well, this is these are the guys who first reported it, so that's why okay. I put it here. All the other articles are sourcing this site. Um, and we look when it comes to illegally downloading things, this is the place you want to go to for all the news. All right. Are you going to read it or am I going to read it? <laughs> I thought you were going to read it, but I will read it. Nintendo has won a $2.1 million summary judgment against the owner and operator of the now defunct pirate site ROM Universe. A California federal court ruled that the man, a Los Angeles resident, uploaded and distributed pirated Nintendo games. In addition, he profited from mass scale copyright infringement by charging paid subscriptions. In September of 2019, gaming giant Nintendo filed suit against the game download portal ROM Universe. The website facilitated a massive online copyright infringement of many popular Nintendo titles, according to the complaint filed at a California district court. Nintendo said that ROM Universe made things worse by profiting from these copyright infringements by selling paid premium accounts that allowed users to download as many games as they wanted. That's the ROM Universe the fought back. Uh, the site's operator, Los Angeles resident Matthew Stroman, uh, clearly disagreed with these allegations. Without an attorney, he decided to defend himself in court. In his view, the site wasn't breaking any laws, and he asked the court to dismiss the case. Nintendo picked, picked this defense apart and found the court on its side. This meant that Stroman had to face the charges as well as millions of dollars in potential damages. ROM Universe uh, also remained online initially, but last summer, after discussions with Nintendo's legal team, the operator agreed to shut it down. However, that didn't end the case. 
after investigating a substantial amount in le- after investing a substantial amount in legal fees, the gaming giant moved for a summary judgment and $15 million in damages. This is a straightforward video game piracy case, and the material facts are undisputed, Nintendo informed the court. For over a decade, defendant Matthew Stroman owned and operated the website ROMUniverse.com. He populated the website with pirated copies of thousands of different Nintendo games and distributed hundreds of thousands of copies to those pirated games. Uh, Stroman, who who continued... Stroman, who continued in court without a lawyer, clearly disagreed. In his opposition brief, he denied that ROM Universe offered uh, for download and distributed pirated ROMs of thousands of Nintendo games. Uh, Stroman also argued that he never uploaded any games himself. Earlier this week, the U.S. District Court Judge Counsel O. Marshall ruled on the matter, largely siding with Nintendo. According to the court, Nintendo provided sufficient evidence to show that Stroman is liable for direct, contributory, and vicarious copyright infringement. In addition, trademark infringement claims were also accepted. Stroman's denials failed to convince the court as he admitted to uploading content to the site in a previous deposition. Uh, The defendant filed a declaration in opposition to the motion wherein he declares that he denies and disputes that he uploaded any files to said website and at no time did he verify the content of said ROM file which is directly contradictory of to his own sworn deposition wherein he testified that he uploaded the ROM files onto his website. Furthermore, oh. defendant testified defendant testified at his deposition that his website indicated that copies of Nintendo's copyrighted video games were available for download on the website. Stroman also profited from the infringement of users from the infringements of users by charging a premium access to the site. He testified that during 2019, he generated between 30 and $36,000 in revenue, which was his main source of income at the time. This guy doesn't sound all there. (laughs) No, he's definitely not. He he, he lied in court, (laughs) lied in court. Uh, didn't see what the problem was. Defended himself. Which is always a bad sign. Uh, Wait, he yeah, only yeah. made thirty thousand to thirty six thousand dollars in revenue. Why does why does he owe two point one million dollars? <laughs> at, at that point, it's basically just to send the message. Nintendo I don't think he's going to wind up. Nintendo requested more than fifty million dollars in copyright and trademark infringement damages. Oh my god! But the court yeah. doesn't want to go this far. Uh, of course, Judge Marshall believes that thirty-five thousand dollars statutory damages for each of the forty-nine copyrighted works is sufficient. Oh my god! Uh, this adds up to one point seven million, which is substantially lower than the ninety thousand dollars per work requested by Nintendo. Uh, I'm not going to read what the judge said. Uh, yeah. The trademark damages are also much lower than requested. Nintendo's original motion asks for 400000 for each of the 29 trademarks, but the court awarded 400000 for all combined, which could be an oversight. Uh, the court fine. Okay, they're just saying what they said. Uh, finally, yeah. uh, Judge Marshall decided not to issue a permanent injunction against Stroman. Nintendo failed to show that it suffered irre- irrepar- irreparable harm. And the fact that Strowman already shut down the site shows that there is no imminent threat of further infringements. All in all, the court orders P- uh, the court orders the former ROM Universe operator to pay a total of two million one hundred thousand one hundred and fifty a lot of money in damages. Yeah. Um, and then here's like one the, million dollars. The conclusion yeah. right here. Uh, that is insane. Yeah, I I think honestly. Dude totally made more than thirty five thousand dollars. You know, <laughs> dude totally made I mean, more I than that. He's and he's just he's he's trying to make it look like he makes less so that he doesn't have to. Worry I don't about know. I I don't know how making money off ROM sites works. Uh, so I don't think that's really out of the ordinary for it to generate that much a year in revenue. Um, he's from Los Angeles, which is an expensive place to live, though. Right. So unless he's living with roomies, I don't know how he can afford to live there off of that. Well, it's it's revenue. So I yeah. assume that's, you know, uh, gross and not net. Am I using that right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
So, yeah, like he's probably got some overhead there, you know. But yeah, the moral of the story is he was charging for the distribution of illegal ROMs. Like he was charging for copyright infringement. He's basically yeah. like a dude on the street handing out DVDs that he burned and charging for them. Yeah. But uh, he's doing it on a grander scale, you know? So, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, I, I, I don't blame Nintendo for suing them. I mean, Nintendo usually sends a cease and desist first. I'd imagine they did the same thing here, but there was... A normally, when they strike down stuff, there's not... They're not profiting off of the copyright infringement. Uh, this guy was directly copyright, uh, directly profiting off of it. So there's possibility that they yeah, didn't even yeah. send a cease and desist. Um, this happened a long time ago. We talked about this a long time ago. This particular case, or yes, Rom's universe. We talked about Rom's universe. Rom. We what, talked about this, this one because I know there, there was because there was another one that they went after. They've gone after a bunch of different ROM sites. I specifically remember ROM Universe. Okay. January 2020, court sides with Nintendo over ROM Universe in an attempt to dismiss the former's lawsuit. Because I remember there was another ROM site. It was like Love ROM or whatever. And it was like a husband and wife team and they like shut it down immediately. They're like, that, we can't go up against Nintendo. This is Torrent Freak. September 11th, 2019. Uh, never forget. Nintendo, never forget this, this day. Nintendo has filed a lawsuit against the alleged operator of the popular pirate site, ROM Universe. The game company accuses the site of brazen and mass scale copyright infringement of its games and hopes to shut okay. it down. ROM Universe, which also offers pirated eBooks and movies, sells paid memberships to those who want unlimited downloads. Last year, Nintendo made headlines worldwide when it lift, when it filed a lawsuit against the popular ROM site Love ROMs. And Love that was Retro. the one. That's the one. That's the one I'm thinking of. So two years ago, we were talking about ROM Universe, and three years ago, on on the chairs, yes, <laughs> we were talking about Love ROM. I rem I remember Love ROMs. Like I vividly remember Love ROMs. Because that just sounds like a delightful place to be. <laughs> <laughs> and now I don't know if Love Roms was was uh, I don't know if they had premium stuff. I don't think so. I think they were just a a popular ROM site, and Nintendo went immediately for them, and they were like, "Okay, goodbye." <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, th I think I think that they got away pretty good. Mm -hmm. Uh, Nintendo requested damages from Love Roms, but I don't know if they ever got it. Yeah. Anyway, uh, the moral story here is uh, don't sell don't sell pirated stuff, but also don't fuck with Nintendo because yes. they they are coming after you. They will. They will, and they will. They will not stop. They will not stop. No, uh, they cherish their copyright a little too much. Yeah. In some cases, I did, did. Did you see the new Digino Gaming about uh, Nintendo and fan games? I want to. I, I have it saved. Apparently, apparently like, right it's in the beginning, all about like uh, like uh, fan game, like how they deal with getting strikes from from uh, Nintendo. Apparently, like what they said in the beginning was Nintendo actually doesn't mind fan games. The problem they have is if it's a fan game that directly competes with something that they're already either making or going to sell or are still selling. So like all those Super Mario 64 remakes or whatever, mm -hmm. those they go after because they always sell Super Mario 64. But like that uh that one Mario game that you really like, the the 2D one that I never remember the name of. You know which one I'm talking about, right? Uh Yes, Super Mario <laughs> Brothers flashback. That's okay because it doesn't. It's not a, like a direct like remake or whatever of something they've already they're, the, that they're currently profiting I, off. Of. I think the problem That's a brand is new thing. that they're always going to be selling their old stuff. Yeah, 
So when people make fan game, or like, you know, there's one that I played recently, Super Mario Odyssey Safari. Yeah. I don't think they've, they haven't gone after them for that. But there's potential that they could be yeah. like, hey, people might get this confused with Super Mario Odyssey. Uh, take it down right now. That's not unlike Nintendo to do. Yeah. Whereas Sega comes out and they're like, uh, just don't profit off it. Yeah, just do whatever. Okay, fine. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, we got Mega Dragon with three months of Prime. Had to sub for those annoying ads. LOL, great podcast so far, bros. If you subscribe to this channel, even with Prime, you don't get ads. Did you know that? Yeah. So you can do that. Uh, it even counts for VODs, I think. Uh, fried biscuits with three hundo bits. Literally, ROM universe goes against the reason for downloading emulators and ROMs. It's these emulator sites that ruin what emulation is meant to preserve. The nerve to charge for a premium uh, on emulators. Shaking my head. Um, not yeah, wrong. You, you can't charge not wrong. for for for, yeah. for ROMs. It's, it's already pirated. It's already you're already yeah. doing a bad thing. <laughs> yeah. Um. Some, it's a necessary evil sometimes, I have to say. It, re no, it really is a necessary, especially in video games where, like, I didn't put it in the keep, but it was recently announced, like, EA is going to not only shut down the online servers for a bunch of Need for Speed games, they're going to delist them from all digital platforms, so you cannot buy them. Right. And, like, in a, a situation like that, if you can't find the disc for those games, you're shit out of luck. The Your only recourse would be to find a pirated version of it. Right. So the games industry is notoriously bad at archiving its own history. So by any means necessary, I guess. Um, Swoopy girl, thanks for another five hundo. I appreciate Thank it. Yeah. Uh, let's continue to move on quickly to Seg Sonic Central, which we talked about last week. We so said we that it was coming. Yes. We didn't. Yeah, because it, it was like. We did our show, and then I think the Sonic Central was a uh, Wednesday. <laughs> yes, but they they uh, showed off a lot. <laughs> here it is. Uh, we got you know what? Nothing that exciting. Although we did get what we asked for. We got Sonic Three. We got yes. So it's going to be a the Sonic Origins compilation. It's going to be a collection of. Sonic 1, Sonic 2, Sonic 3, Sonic and & Knuckles, and Sonic CD. Uh, no firm release date, uh, but it will be available on all platforms. Uh, it should be noted that the trailer they showed for Sonic Origins showed the Christian Whitehead versions of Sonic 1, 2, and Sonic CD, which you can tell because they were in full widescreen, but it showed the original version of Sonic 3, which is in 4x3. It was later confirmed that... Sonic 3 and Knuckles will be in widescreen in the Sonic Origins collection. Yes, this is a, a tweet by Katie who says, been seeing quite a few of you ask about Sonic 3 and Knuckles in Sonic Origins and whether or not we will see the game in widescreen there. Just to clear this up, yep, Sonic 3 will be available in widescreen. Very strange yeah. of them to make it 4x3 in the trailer. Uh, and that to, might be and, the only footage they had available. Yeah, but like it's also weird that they're showing different versions of the games. <laughs> but I will say, so they, it looks the games in widescreen look great. Oh yeah, no, it, like if once you play Sonic in widescreen, like Sonic One or Two in widescreen, like even in Sonic Mania, like it makes a world of difference because you can see what's coming at you, and it helps out a lot. Uh, I don't think this is gonna make Sonic One good unless they unless they put the give us the spin dash. Um, they might, because every time it was like the the Sega Forever version of Sonic of Sonic One, and even the the Christian Whitehead iOS version of Sonic One adds the spin dash. And if this is using the Christian Whitehead Sonic One, it'll be there. It's just really strange that they cut to Sonic Three, the game that everyone's. It's a big deal game of this whole thing, and it's four by three. It, it's weird. Yeah, and it says in the bottom corner original gameplay. What does that even mean? It's probably from what a, the original system that they ripped it from. So, like, if they only had 4 by 3 footage of Sonic 3 and Knuckles, they, they probably got that from a Genesis. It's, 
original gameplay meaning it's not what the collection is going to look like that that's what they should have said was unfinished gameplay right what the, what they usually say in travel is like this um or like beta footage or something yeah uh original implies that it's their own footage <laughs> yeah which is weird Anyway, uh, that was the big deal to me. They also announced that there's going to be a Sonic Colors Ultimate. Uh, that's something that Will brought into existence with his words. Yes, you're all you're all welcome for it. Uh, Sonic Colors Ultimate is a remaster of the 2010 platformer, which is coming to PS4, Xbox One, Switch, and PC through the Epic Game Store on September 7th. Developed by Blind Squirrel Studio, uh, Blind Squirrel as an Entertainment, who did the Mass Effect uh, remaster. This version will update the game's look and feel, as well as add new features and a new mode called Rival Rush. Sonic Colors was the best Sonic game for a long time, and it only came out on the Wii. It wasn't a multi-platform game. It's never been re-released in any capacity. And the the DS before somebody says anything in the chat. Yes, and the DS version. Okay, what? It doesn't count. It's basically like a Sonic Rush 3. Uh... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but yeah so it's it's great that there's it's finally available on modern consoles and more people can play it which is because it really it was one of the best sonic games for a very long time it's the direct link to sonic generations um, and i just want for the record i tweeted on march 10th to sega to port sonic colors to modern systems why? March 10th, and it got announced now. Why does it need to be remastered? I thought a port would be just fine. Well, they probably just wanted to like make it because remember, it came, the original came out on the Wii, so it it ran in 480p and had uh, motion controls. This is probably their way to like you know big up the graphics, make it more of a modern looking game, and rework the controls for more i mean you can use a traditional controller in sonic colors but you know format it to specifically fit modern control schemes true also like remaster they do have, i guess like, they do have to change some stuff yeah also like remaster remake port like none of those words really mean anything anymore <laughs> also true yeah um i don't know i mean i'm glad they're doing it because this is the game everybody really likes. Uh, yeah. I don't. Uh, I don't know if I'm gonna play it. I don't really care. I mean, I'm. That, I'm sure shit gonna play it. I'm excited I'm as hell for it. More interested in this other game, and I don't think it's gonna be good. <laughs> uh, yeah. This this concerns me. Uh, there's a new game from Sonic Team. So, uh, Sonic Team, which had previously released Sonic Generations, yay, and Sonic Forces, uh, has begun work on a new mainline Sonic game. The teaser trailer revealed that the game will arrive in 2022 for PS5, PS4, Xbox Series X and S, Xbox One, Nintendo Switch, and PC. No other information was revealed, but the teaser shows Sonic picking up speed in a forest setting, which seems to cause digital effects around him before his trailer before his trailer leaves behind what looks like a runic symbol. Um, I had just added this to the keep uh, because Nintendo Life has a word that the new game will be an open world adventure called Sonic Rangers. This was a leak from a while ago, I think, the Sonic Rangers thing. I don't know about the open world situation, but the name Sonic Rangers was a leak from like a while ago. Right. Because, uh, f- yeah, because Sonic Rangers was seen like in their PR release for yes. this. <laughs> and uh what was it? Uh a data miner has already uncovered some extra information about the upcoming release. A leaked 4K version of the Sonic teaser uh supposedly contains references to Sonic Rangers, which quite possibly would be the new game title. And you can see like in the metadata of it this guy tweeted out it says rangers uh, uh i saw some crazy like weird conspiracy thing that some fans did uh that took that logo and it did like a gr- made like a grid out of it 
Yeah. Uh, and they, oh, was this it? No, no. Damn it. Uh, they took that logo and made a grid out of it, and they called it. They, they they were able to somehow spell out chaos. I saw that. I can't find it now. I I remember seeing that. I mean, and it's just re-released Sonic Chaos then. Yo, imagine though they make a 3D version of Sonic Chaos. Though. That'd be crazy. There's there's a there's a fan remake of Sonic Chaos out there, and it's like running in like the Sonic Mania uh, art design. Oh, yeah. I will have to find that. Yeah, I'll I'll see if I can find it and send it to you. But, uh, so here's I I'm happy we're getting a new Sonic game, like an actual new Sonic game. I think it's good. I think it's the right time. Um, and Roger Craig Smith is back as the voice of Sonic. That's always nice. Um, here's Were my he problem. Like quit like like ten seconds ago. <laughs> yeah, he quit. But then they're like, uh, actually, come back. Yeah, <laughs> we need you. You're the best thing this franchise has going for it. <laughs> so, this trailer was just Sonic running, and no title, and that's it. Yeah. Sonic Forces trailer was Sonic running. And that's it. No title. Yeah. And forces. It was Sonic Forces because he was part of a, a freedom fighter force to stop Robotnik. Rangers implies something similar. Yeah. And I I think we've we all agree that we don't need another Sonic Forces. Right. No, this this I, I have I have low expectations for whatever the hell this is. Yeah. I mean it doesn't look like colors though, the way he's like glowing like teal. It does, it does, but at the same time, you know, Sonic Lost World and Son and Sonic Forces even like made heavy use of the Wisp characters from Sonic yes. Colors. And I think set like Sonic team just looked at that and said, Oh, people like the Wisps. From Sonic Colors, so we'll put those in these new games. Not realizing what people liked about Sonic Colors was the level design, was the were the challenges, was the, like the the minimalist story that was there, um, the more back to basics approach. Um, so hopefully that's the lesson they take. Especially if they're re-releasing Sonic Colors, they should take that lesson from it. This isn't the one that I. Saw. Oh no, it is. Uh, the real Wago. Uh, just linked me this. Um, this is the grid thing I was talking about. It looks like it's a zap or something in this weird alien geometry. And then they yeah. freaking made a grid out of it, and then they like extended the grid, and they were able to make chaos out of it. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, chaos can apply a lot of things. I mean, there's just chaos and rolls in every game, so it could just be that. Yeah. Um, especially in a Sonic game. <laughs> yeah. But I mean. Sonic Chaos was a great game. It was a great game. <laughs> Not a lot of people got to play it. So, yep. Uh, yeah, I have low expectations for this. I don't think I don't think they're gonna uh, all of a sudden make a great 3D Sonic game. I think I think uh, I, I'm not sure so Sonic Team has learned yet. It's I mean because we had in the last gen we had Sonic Unleashed, which showed potential but was bogged down by Werehog bullshit. Then they released Sonic Colors, which was good. Then they released Sonic Generations, which was great. And then they just decided to just stop, say, fuck it, and drive the car right into a brick wall. I just don't think they so care. Like, I just, I, I don't think they give a shit at all. I think that they're I, like, they're I like, sales are fine every time we release a Sonic game. We just need to keep doing that. No, because I think at a certain point, embarrassment does set in, especially like for a Japanese company. That should have happened. Like, so long ago and they just I mean, keep it releasing trash i mean it did and then they like they it's, it was a slow crawl back to being good but eventually they made it and then they sort no, of like i think they're just you know, i think they just big. i think they just they're playing darts and they grabbed a handful of darts and they were like that and one of them got on and they were like yeah that is a good one uh, do that again. Yeah, I don't think that they are trying at all. I think a very I, select few people over there are trying, and the rest of them are just like, it's a job, and they're just trying to make money. 
look, I am always going to give Sonic game the benefit of the doubt. I will be the first person to tell you if this looks like crap. Uh, all I can say right now is I am nervous as yes. hell. Yes. But I will be giving this a shot whenever the hell it comes out. Um, I'll, I'm interested. I don't. I, I have to look at footage before I make my decision. Um, Twenty bits, Mega Dragon. Wouldn't putting the game widescreen be the same uh, as how clone consoles stretch the game to fit your whole TV? No, no, because those literally just stretch the image. What what uh, Christian Whitehead did was kept everything the same. And then it just basically revealed more of the level itself on the left and right of the screen. Yeah, that you're makes get, you're getting that makes sense. You're getting more. You're getting to see more of the field of view. You're getting to see more of the game. Whereas the, these shitty clone consoles, they literally just just stretch the whole image, and the pixels get bigger. It's it's a, yeah. It, it's not it's not the same. Um. And Klo- Kylo Katzuni, thank you for rating us. How are you doing? Thank I you. I hope you are well. I appreciate your viewership. And Spoopy Girl, I think, thanks for the 500. I don't know if we said that already. Yeah, um, we did. <clears throat> there were oh, other things wow. announced at this. What? Oh, I thought we were going to move it on. I was just real quick. Uh, we're getting a Sonic uh, short film called Rise of the Wisps from uh, Tyson Hesse. Which is cool. Uh, Sonic. We also talked a little bit about the Netflix show, uh, Sonic Prime. Um, we're getting Sonic cameos in Minecraft and <laughs> Two Points Hospital and uh, the the Olympic Games Tokyo 2020, um, which was funny. Did you see that one? It's I literally just one. a Sonic mascot costume. <laughs> yep. It's not even Sonic proper, and I think that's fantastic. Um, Sonic games will be joining the Epic store and also PlayStation now, uh, and, uh, a couple of things for some mobile games. <laughs> so not much. That's we it. just know they're working on a game, which we knew oh, they were working how on. How could already. I forget? Bling fans of hip hop culture oh, yes. might be interested in these really cool, uh, diamond necklaces. I forgot about this. This is actually pretty ridiculous. Uh, what yeah. is the company? I don't remember. Oh, they don't have it in the in the article. Yeah, hold on. It's like it's like a known Yeah, it's like a famous jeweler, yeah. It's like a hip hop type. Oh, of course. Yeah, of course King I just got something. Google. Yeah, King yeah. something. King Ice. King Ice. There you go. This is what comes up when I Google it. Yeah. Patrick, SpongeBob. Sonic diamond necklaces are cool, actually. Are they? (laughs) Are they cool? I mean, maybe. (laughs) Yeah, this was like randomly in the Sonic Central. Yeah. That was pretty crazy. Um... Yeah, I don't know. That was that was kind of like a bizarre, like yeah. like like came out of nowhere thing. Yeah. Anyway, uh, hey, there's some news about E3. Cool. Wow, I can't wait. Yeah. Uh, basically, E3 2021 will have an award show. Um, at the end, that's how they're gonna end it this year. Uh, E3 2021 will have an award show with honors chosen by editors from IGN, Gamespot, PC Gamer, and Games Radar. Pool of nominees covers every game showcased throughout E3's four-day online-only event. The award show's top honors will go to the most anticipated game overall, with selections given to the most anticipated games of certain publishers and developers. The winners will be announced on June 15th, the final day of the E3 broadcast. Um. So before, like, you know, you'd always see, like, you know, best of E3 awards on, like, the game box art and posters and whatnot. Yes. Those were handed out individually by different publications. This is going to be an official from E3 best of E3 badge that they're going to do. Um, This is 
dumb and bad <laughs> and perpetuates uh, the video game hype machine that leads to things like people buying cyberpunk without realizing that it's a bo- uh, broken buggy mess uh, and other similar situations to that. Um, I don't like this. <laughs> It's uh, all right. I'm already biased because I hate E3, but right. this is, this perpetuates the 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 circle jerk of the games industry. You know, like all like yeah. all you if you want to have a good game, you want to sell a lot, you gotta you gotta suck up to the ESA. Yeah, you know. Yeah, but it's not like, only, like not only not only sucking up to the ESA. What it does is it makes game pu- companies put their best foot forward and not show you the shambling mess that's behind said foot. Yeah. Which leads to situations like Cyberpunk 2077, like Aliens Colonial Marines, if people remember that disaster. Yeah, so, they, they scramble to to get news out about their game around E3 time. Yeah. And now, well, yeah, what are they even... Oh, I guess the uh, honors like most anticipated game. Yeah. Most anticipated game. Most in, That's the thing. It's like this whole award show is like, oh... This this game is going to be good. This is going to be a good multiplayer game. This is going they, to be a good you know RPG. They, this they is also, going to be a, a good sounding game. They also have most anticipated games of certain publishers and developers. So yeah. They're gonna have they're gonna have most anticipated game overall, and they're gonna have most anticipated EA game, most anticipated Ubisoft game, and that's yeah. just fucking stupid. <laughs> yeah. Imagine if. The Oscars did that. Most anticipated Warner Brothers movie. Yeah. Nobody cares. They should all just be 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 uh every game should be uh uh judged against it, it should be it should be judged as its own thing, not as being as the publisher that it is. Yeah, and it should be judged when it actually comes out and people have played it and you know can say definitively yes this is good or no this is bad i'll give you an ex- another example from the side of film uh green lantern the movie which was not good mm-hmm. was given like uh f- most anticipated movie uh at the spike movie awards or whatever the fuck it was it's that's what i'm talking about you're 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 basically a a warning some someone for just looking cool yeah yeah i mean there's something to best of show like when they have an when they have a sarah they have a a, a conference there's something yeah. to having something that is the most anticipated or whatever um my problem is having a whole show around it there's just one there's just one best yeah. of show that like you know Maybe you can break it up by category, like best RPG, best this, or most anticipated RPG, most anticipated this, most anticipated yeah. that. I don't have a problem with that. My problem is I don't fucking like the ESA, and I don't want them involved in anything. <laughs> and I don't like uh, I don't like them breaking it up by publisher. That's such a circle jerk. And like, yeah, like you said, there's one thing to say best in show, but it's another thing when that's the only when like you build your whole marketing campaign around that. Mm-hmm. because that basically means that you don't that sense tells the developer okay we don't have to do any more work people are already going to buy this game because of this badge is on it and that's something that needs to stop yeah i mean i mean there, mm, there there's companies that throw millions of dollars at their e3 presentation and there's companies yeah. that can't do that you know yeah so um I, I I hate everything about what's happening with E3 this year. Yeah. Uh, two weeks away. Yeah. It's Who's excited? Up. Not me. Uh, so there's rumors that next week we're going to get Nintendo news. Um, really? I'm not posting a video next week, I don't think. Unless right. Nintendo decides they're dropping something. There might be a Pokemon thing next week. Pokemon usually going- comes out a week ahead of... Uh, of uh, of e3 yes i am you are going next week yes okay i'm going away next week everybody leave me alone i may ask you when you go to target to check out their action figure section okay (laughs) okay (laughs) just 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 may ask you because i don't know if you know but i've been having issues 
with that. <laughs> you tweeted about it. I tweeted about one of my issues. I have other issues. But that's not for this show. <laughs> okay, fine. Fine. All right. Uh, anyway, uh, let's plow through the rest. Uh, right. We only have right here, Ubisoft has a new film. Ubisoft has is it's their second official film from Ubisoft Films. Their first was, of course, Assassin's Creed. Bad movie. This film is called Werewolves Within, and it is not based on a pre-existing video game. Wow. Sorry, loosely based on Red Storm Entertainment's 2016 VR social deduction game. <laughs> Whatever the fuck that is. What the hell? Werewolves Within uh, stars Sam Richardson as a new park ranger and Milana... Vintrub as a postal worker, both trying to keep the, the peace in a small town plagued by a mysterious beast. The movie also features Javier Guillen, also known as Guillermo from What We Do in the Shadows, uh, who has the best line in the trailer. I uh, believe this, this is the AT&T woman. Yes. Yes, it is the AT&T woman. Uh, this doesn't look terrible. Like This actually looks like a legitimate you know, mid-budget horror film that you would find on, like, Shudder or whatever that people kind of like. Yes. Which is shocking to me that this is coming from Ubisoft, who made one really bad Assassin's Creed movie and just continues to make the same fucking game over and over again. Maybe they're just trying to... uh Maybe they're just trying to get their movie chops. Maybe they're trying to develop a movie studio, like you know, like just flush it out a little more, and they and they just want to get some work out there. Well, you know what? This is not a bad way to go. You know, make movies not based on your pre-existing property because that's not going to go well. Start making like actual movies and see where that goes. And then maybe like once you have enough money and freedom or whatever, then you could start making I don't know Watch Dogs the movie. Yeah. And also, I mean, it's interesting because, like, you know, people make comic books to eventually be made into movies, right? People right. make uh, video games to eventually be made into movies when really video games cost more than the movie and they make more than the movie. So it yeah. wouldn't be weird for Ubisoft to make movies to then be made into games. <laughs> True. It would be cheaper and, you know. <laughs> there were there were companies like Take Two started a comic book arm to yeah. get ideas for games. So maybe Ubisoft is doing this with movies. Hey, low budget but I, movies. I mean, like, comic books are much cheaper to make than video game than movies. Yes, I agree. So they're they're not doing this right. <laughs> <laughs> um. Anyway. Next, we got Borderlands 3 is not getting crossplay. What? All right, so I read this wrong. Real quick, I'll just summarize it. Borderlands 3 is getting crossplay, but not on PlayStation consoles. Ah, uh, PlayStation. If yeah, so if you have if you play uh Borderlands 3 on Xbox or PC, um then you can play against each other, but if you have a a Sony system, too bad. Uh from uh, Gearbox CEO and known charlatan Randy Pitchford. Good news or bad news first? Good news. An update to Borderlands 3 uh, has been prepared for release that includes full cross-play support across all platforms. Bad news for certification. We have been required by the publisher to remove cross-play support for PlayStation consoles. Oh? Yes. So Sony basically said, do not put that uh in the update to uh, the PlayStation version of Borderlands. Who is the publisher? Take two. So I guess they had an issue with PlayStation. Or 2K games, rather. Yeah, well, remember, and this article mentions this, uh, as said in the Epic vs. Apple, as revealed in the Epic vs. Apple court case, uh, Sony is very reluctant against cross-platform play of any kind to the point where Epic has to pay Sony in order to be in order for Fortnite to be cross-platform. So this means they didn't reach a deal. 2K and and Sony didn't reach a deal, which they shouldn't Basically, have had to have yes. done anyway. Uh I'm glad that everybody's flaming PlayStation now. Everybody's pretty much coming out and saying that PlayStation is the reason why cross-play isn't working out. Yeah. 
Um, good. I mean, bad, yeah. but good on uh, <laughs> Randy Pitchford. The, the only good thing he's uh, ever done. The only good thing he's done. Um, uh, bothers me that he's friends with Penn and Teller. <laughs> <laughs> Um. Anyway, last news. Last, we have uh, Crisis the Remastered Trilogy. Crisis, yes. Um, real, so we got Crisis 1 Remastered. It was kind of a mixed bag when it launched. It's kind of buggy and whatnot, but they're trying to fix it. And I hope they get it fixed soon because in the fall of this year, they're also going to release Crisis 2 and 3. Crisis uh, 2 was like, freaking awesome. Crisis 2 low-key legit one of the best first person shooters of that generation mm -hmm. so good so much fun uh crisis 3 was the next game uh, <laughs> i i don't know if i i don't know if it was me or what i don't i didn't give that game a fair shot but like it was I, not clicking for me i don't know if i beat it but i played a lot of it and uh i definitely didn't beat it the environments were kind of all the same uh and uh the they added it was pretty much the same everything as the second game they added a bow and the bow didn't yeah. really make the gameplay that good that was that was the era when every game just added a bow. every game had a bow yeah yeah and, and it, it didn't add much to the gameplay uh yeah. crisis 2 added a lot from the original game it added a lot and it was just a well-paced well-told game it's um, it streamlined everything it streamlined everything the multiplayer was incredible it was halo reach before halo reach yeah the, the single player like knew how to build to its set pieces and then gave you a cool down period before you like go on to the next major uh, encounter and this is back this was even when call of duty started like every single second is a set piece it's just run to the next set piece and the next crisis 2 knew how to like pace itself and slow things down knew when to be a stealth game knew when to be uh, a hardcore action game knew when to be an, an event and then you know had the right balance of all of it so definitely get crisis 2 when it comes out the games will be released individually, so if you already have Crisis 1, you can get 2 and 3 separately, or there will be a, a bundle pack uh, where you can buy all 3 at once. Yeah, the way you switch between abilities was uh, was what made the game really good. Uh, yeah. For all the different scenarios, and you know, I think both of us like playing games in the stealth way. So, um, yeah. You know, like get, putting your camo on, sneaking up on somebody, and then yeah. switching to like to like the power mode and just punching them in the face was freaking awesome. Yeah. Um. Anyway, uh, I'll look forward to that. I might actually play Crisis Two. Give it a shot. I, I would absolutely play Crisis Two again. If it get, if it runs well on the Switch, look out, guys. That's all the news we have for today. We pl yes. powerhouse through it, but which means we, we do have one more thing for you. Quit of the week. Quit of the week. Quit of the week. This is from F Retro Firearms, which is not actually about firearms. It's a meme account. <laughs> uh, it's. Uh, I'll just play it. Here you go. <laughs> It's it that's gonna be hard to describe to headphone listeners. Uh, <laughs> it, it's uh it's a thwomp that Mario just gave a skateboard to, and then he's skating around the first world of uh, <laughs> Mario sixty four. It's very strange. It's but it's, it's a good tweet. <laughs> uh, that is, I can't wait to watch that when my RAM is not choking on all the other stuff I'm doing right now. Guys, we're gonna talk to you real quick. Yes, if you left the comment on last week's Wolf Den podcast, and this is the part of the show where we will finally answer you. But of course, ladies and gentlemen watching us right now, please start leaving your questions and comments because we will get to them when we are done with everybody else. Uh, we got from last week, we have Josh Torre who says, Bob did it. He made the perfect video title. No, he didn't. Will did. Yeah. Will actually made the title for gotcha. last week. Um, what was the title? Uh, the Left for Dead Steam, reference. Valve, Valve about to leave. 
Nintendo left for dead. That's a yeah, something like that. Yes. Uh yes. Uh Casper 3237. I saw the video of Bob, AJ, and Ian playing the dodgeball game like five times. Gotta say, pretty entertaining. I gotta say, you all should watch that. It's a good time. We have a new one that should be coming out very soon of us playing Is again. It still and we free? did significantly worse. It apparent so it it it's not it's free on game pass right so you can get it with with game pass which is what i did or they just announced it's free until level 25 so it is free it like wasn't free for like a day and then they decided it was free until level 25 yeah uh so that's knockout city is what we're talking about everybody and i recommend definitely play it and play it with some friends because it's a good time uh melon says time splitters is one of those games that all of your friends seem to know and love but you've somehow managed to never even seen footage of it (laughs) i feel that i only know about it because of you and i think you probably rented it or bought it a long time ago and i I definitely rented it we used to go over (laughs) his house and everybody would play it well not not, and that wasn't just me and jake like most of my friends like my core circle of friends like had that game and played that game religiously at the time mm-hmm. um so i have seen it and i have played it I, it does exist at least the second one does um third game is very expensive actually if you try to find time sweat is future perfect it's shockingly expensive um but yeah i i can confirm it is real it is fantastic um hopefully they re-release it in some capacity so that you can experience the goodness too uh mx woods says hey guys quick question for both of you what was your favorite video you ever worked on also what would you say your most successful gaming and comic video is uh that is a good question i feel like my favorite video changes often you know i like our like right now my favorite video might be the last pax video we did really i like those videos yeah, no, those are good videos. I, I, my favorite videos are often the ones that don't get a lot of views. But um, yeah, every Same. upcoming <laughs> Switch game we played at PAX, or there were, I think there was, yeah, that's the one. Yeah, I like these videos because it's yeah. basically just us going around having a good time. I'm gonna link it in the chat. Um, but I, I mean, I also like like my Game Boy camera video and like uh, what was a recent one? Oh, when when I when I got this thing. I don't know. Uh, you know, I'm going to stick with this. The the PAX East 2020 video. I'll do this. I'll what you said. <laughs> <laughs> you weren't in that. This is the one you weren't in. Uh, oh, all right. So in 2019. <laughs> there you go. Or E3. Oh, that too. Yeah. Uh, The tenant video was great. That one. I also like that one. That one was good. But that yeah, was like too that mainstream, was a good I feel like. I don't know, um, like my favorite ones that I did were ones that like I actually took time on. Mm-hmm. It's like so many of those goddamn videos were like write and record on Monday, edit on Tuesday to be out on Wednesday. Right. But there were some where like I knew ahead of time what I was going to talk about. So I would like actually take the whole weekend to like write and process. And like if I had to watch a movie or read something, I'd, I'd do it. And like enjoy it while I was doing it, and then sit down, discuss my thoughts. Like the Batman '89 retrospective was one of those. the the ninety The ninety Turtles retrospective was one of those. the The ranking the Batman cartoons was one of those because I actually took the time to like go through everything and like write it properly and process it, and you know clearly, you know, say what I had to say on everything, stuff like that. Those are my. Those are also nowhere near my most successful videos. My most yeah. successful videos. The thing that they all had in common was that they were either last minute or off script. Yeah, that's uh, that's like, a theme. That's that's why the tenant video is like uh, surprising because that one I actually spend a long time on. Um, yeah, but that was. This happens a lot where I'll spend a lot of time on a video and I will say to myself, "This is either going to do really really good or really really bad," and there's no in between. <laughs> Yeah. Basically, you, making YouTube videos is a crapshoot. Yes. Even if you think you know that your video is going to be a hit, 
the algorithm could have a cold and just not help you in the slightest. I used to be able to tell when a video was going to do good, and now I can't. Yeah. Anymore. Yeah. No. It's. I can have like an idea. I know what's going to do bad. <laughs> yeah. And and it's only gotten worse. It seems. Yes, it has gotten like a even lot worse. just like because I'm basically like looking in from the outside now, but I can clearly see it is getting worse and worse and worse. It is. Uh, I had a theory that I was telling people. So a lot of a lot of YouTubers uh, are having problems right now. Like views are way down across the whole platform. Um, and to me, what it looks like is it's just you know we had really high highs during COVID. Everybody was inside watching stuff. So, you know, we were spoiled from that. Now everybody's out. It's the summer. Everybody's enjoying themselves. Nobody's watching YouTube videos. And I completely understand that. But YouTube doesn't understand that. The YouTube yes. algorithm doesn't know that COVID happened. So YouTube judges all of our videos against our own videos. So in YouTube's eyes... Hey, Wolf Den, your videos aren't doing as good as your videos were doing a few weeks ago. What's up with that? We're going to show less people these videos now because nobody wants to see your videos anymore. But if you're a new YouTuber, YouTube doesn't have any videos to compare them against. So my theory is that if you're a new YouTuber, now's the time. Get out there, make a whole shit ton of videos, and don't stop. Yeah. Never Make like stop. 10 and then if it doesn't work out then stop anyway um gorgot says bob i need your expert opinion what is a good qu sound quality earbud that's also comfortable ps zelda is best sonic shovelware like sonic spinball shouldn't count i'm not loving them anymore stop i i'm i'm tired of this sonic spinball is bad bullshit that just just plagues the internet. The audio is it's terrible. The, the, the music is garbage. The music the music ain't great. The, there's one song that's pretty good, and the graphics <laughs> are weird. They're like they're like kind of dark and edgy looking. But Sonic Spinball, it's a good time. I will not hear anything else. I will not hear otherwise. I link these all of the time. These are the headphones I'm currently using. They're in ear monitors. Uh, they don't have a mic. I use these whenever I stream at my desk. Uh, I also have these that are cheaper and they have a mic in them and I, use, I keep them in my bag or my jacket for my phone. These are a little more comfortable. The, these ones, the ones that I have in now, you, the, the tips are foam and you squeeze them down and then you put them in your ear and then they expand. So they're not going to fall out. If you like go running, this might be a good thing to have. Um, these are a lot more noise canceling. Uh, these are a little more comfortable to just pop in and pop out, but they're not as premium, I guess you could say. Um, so those are, those are your answers. Anyway, uh, now we're in the chat for a minute. Yes. I will link these headphones in the chat. Uh, the first one's the expensive one. Second ones are the less expensive one. uh khalil jama did i miss something or did you guys skip the state of play did you watch that no uh, horizon. It was horizon zero dawn wow <laughs> crazy i can't believe yeah. they're coming out with that game we knew about yeah no nah, i didn't watch it the only thing that came out of that was that tweet that that guy made who was like oh, i can't believe they're making women not look like sexy objects anymore. yeah <laughs> Somebody like tweeted at me defending that, and I'm like, "Nah, bro." <laughs> oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna rip him a new asshole. Let me see that. Because I, I was trying to like, think, I was legit trying to think of like a, a joke tweet in response, but like I couldn't think of anything that's stupid. I, I actually, I qu quote tweeted it and was drafting something snarky to say, and then I, I, uh, I was like, I got nothing. Everybody else is doing better. Yeah. Oh, the, oh, no, he didn't delete his tweet. <laughs> Somebody said it's a valid opinion. I think it's wrong, but it is an opinion. I mean, it is. I mean, is it, it, it's he might a, be talking about opinion. your opinion. He might be talking about you, though, because you said, uh, I was trying to find a way to poke fun at this, like, say, DC. Oh, no, no, never mind. He's talking about the other guy. 
Yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't th- say it's saying you don't like how the 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 pretty woman in the game isn't pretty enough is not a valid criticism. Uh, yeah, I don't. That's one th- thing that really creeps me out is when a woman is brought up at all and somebody their first reaction is she's not hot or like i don't know i'm not into it it's like nobody asked if you were into it or not we weren't yeah we weren't there yet it was just a person yeah just chill out you know it's yeah we're not all trying to have sex with this person it's just the protagonist of the video game you know, she's just she's just like a, in the friggin' yeah. uh, in 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 the neo jungle. Like, relax. Yeah. You know, not nobody not said every, you had to have sex with them. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Not every video game character. <laughs> she probably would have want to have sex with you anyway if she was sure. real. Not sure. every video game character needs to look like a model. Just like how not every human being looks like a model. Right. 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 What 4K mono would you recommend for the Xbox Series X that doesn't cost an arm and a leg, uh, or would you hold off on H until HDMI 2.1 because becomes more available? Says Vezino. Personally, I am holding off until HDMI 2.1 becomes readily available. The Eve monitors are the first HDMI 2.1 monitors, and I think they are now shipping. And I have one pre-ordered, so uh, I will make a video when I get one. Uh, and I'll let you know that that one I Stay think has the most potential. Um, if you don't really care about HDMI 2.1, there's some good options out there. You can really just get any HDMI. You can really just get any, you know, 4K 60 monitor that has HDMI that does 4K through HDMI. But that's very important. I'll tell you what, this BenQ monitor I have, absolute garbage. I'm starting to hate it. It's <laughs> not. It's not automatically switching really? between HDMI's. I have to like unplug it and plug it back in. It's really annoying. Oh jeez. Um. Anyway, Edward Bova, Will, what is the what is your opinion on Paul Soares and Samuel E. Wright and Eric Carl and B. J. Todd? That's a lot passing this week. Yeah. They all died. And Bob, yeah, what do you think about an extended cut of the 1993 Super Mario Bros. movie has been made? I don't remember that movie at all. To be perfectly honest. Oh, the the Super Mario Brothers movie? Yeah, I don't remember like anything from the movie. Really? Yep. Because I remember, I haven't seen that movie in years. And I remember a lot of it. Maybe yeah, it's because I'm, you remember everything. We used to movie. watch it all the time, True. but yeah, I don't remember uh, anything from that movie. I mean, this news broke like right before we went live, but apparently there's there's like a fan archive of the movie, and they've managed to put back like 20 minutes of lost footage into the film. Oh my god. Yeah. Uh, yeah. People are goddamn psychopaths sometimes. Uh, and all those people who passed away, if you don't know, real quick, Paul Souls was the voice of Spider-Man on the 66 cartoon. Um, Samuel E. Wright was the voice of Sebastian in The Little Mermaid. Eric Carle was the writer of The Hungry Caterpillar, The Very Hungry Caterpillar. And B.J. Thomas um, was popular for songs such as Hooked on a Feeling and Raindrops Keep Falling on My Head. <laughs> um, I mean... Yeah, it was really weird. There's one right after another, right after another. But I'm not the type of person who believes in, you know, when celebrities die, there's a big conspiracy out there that the Illuminati is, like, taking out their enemies and whatnot. It's just, you know, a very tragic turn of events that happened. So, I mean, it's sad. Don't get me wrong. But if if you're if you if you want me to say that this is because that. Uh, Coca-Cola is teaming up with Delta Airlines to take out their enemies and their plan to buy up the Walt Disney Corporation. It's not it. <laughs> we missed this before. Mecha Dragon on 25 bits. Will, how you doing, bro? What games you been playing? Uh, well, I really got to pee right now, but so thanks for asking. Um, I also have to I'm try- Try to wrap I'm this trying up. To get through, <laughs> I'm trying to get through Doom Eternal as best I can. It's just I haven't I haven't had time to like sit down and game as much as I wanted to. I have been go like actively going through my comics backlog though, and I'm very excited about that. I'm running through James Tinian's Detective Comics run from the beginning of DC Rebirth, and that is fantastic. So everybody read that. MK Lame MK Loomis 
with 10 months, I, this, my freaking, I'm getting a million phone calls right now. Everybody's trying to hang out with me. I got, don't these people have work? <laughs> it's amazing how little people work and how much yeah. I do. Maybe it's, maybe I'm the problem, Will. Anyway. Well, you know what they say, if you run into an asshole in the morning, you ran into an asshole. But if you keep running into assholes, you're probably the asshole. <laughs> I run into a lot of assholes. Well, that explains a lot. That explains a lot. <laughs> uh, MK Loomis, thank you for the 10 months from 12 minutes ago. I'm sorry we missed it. Uh, fried biscuit with the 500 bits. Bob, if you live near Manhattan, you got to go to Barcade. I... Uh, I, I know of Barcade. I'll just I'll just leave it at that. Yeah. <laughs> um uh I am in Brooklyn, so I have been to Barcade. That's a lot yeah. of the reason why I wanted to move to Brooklyn was because I used to hang out and go over there all the time. Um now how how often have you been there since you've been to Barcade? Exactly zero times. <laughs> um yeah. maybe once, maybe once. And also, there was a global pandemic, and nobody wanted to touch arcade cabinets. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Louis says, Bob, did you see my PBR coffee tweet? I did. I don't know oh, how don't I feel about me. making a video on it, but I do kind of want to try it. Oh, that doesn't sound... It does not sound good at all, Will, but I, I, my curiosity is getting the best of me right now. All right. I mean, look, I don't blame you for being curious, but... Uh, I think we're going to leave it at that because we both have to okay. be. Yes, we do. Together. So, yes. <laughs> we're going to keep the call on and just yes. bring our laptops into the bathroom. See who can pee louder. Yeah. Have you seen that meme? That's I think it's like Shadow. No, I think it's Sonic. He's coming out of the shower and he <laughs> he's like, he's like, you frying chicken over there? Nah, just kidding. <laughs> you pee nice and loud. <laughs> it's very, very strange. Uh, yeah. Anyway, continue. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolf Den Podcast is every single Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash Wolf Den. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den Podcast, so you can watch it on demand whenever you want. If you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you can do that as well, because we're also an audio podcast on anchor.fm slash Wolf Den Podcast and your preferred podcast service of choice but no matter where you get all this great wonderful content from please be sure to subscribe rate and review us because that helps us with placement on all of those respective platforms uh potentially no podcast next week because i'm gonna be away yes. however there might be a weird situation maybe we'll do a pre-recorded thing and just upload it to youtube and uh and uh and podcast services and we'll make it like shorter i don't know yeah potentially weird podcast situation next week uh yeah. but i'll be streaming probably a lot more this week to compensate for my absence next week um thank you all for being here everybody go right now watch mega man who is uh he's been in this community for a really long time and i've been wanting to rate him for a while and he's never on when i'm on when i'm getting off so everybody go say hi to mega man uh from us okay Go say hi. He'll yeah. appreciate it very much. And we'll, he's playing Pokemon. And we'll see you all later. Uh, goodbye. Bye.